Hey, what's up? It's Tom from Plain White Tees. Pleasure to be here on Heard It in a Love Song. Um, Rick asked me what my fondest memory of Hey There Delilah was, of, you know, the time with the song. Um, I don't know if he meant writing it or just anything, but I have to think the first thing that comes to my head was being at the Grammys. We got nominated for two Grammys for Hey There Delilah. And, um... Being at the Grammys, I was seated right across the aisle from Ringo Starr. And obviously, I'm a huge Beatles fan. So the whole night, I just knew. I'm like, oh my God, I got to talk to Ringo. I've got to say hi to Ringo. And uh, we ended up losing Song of the Year to Amy Winehouse Rehab, which was a total bummer. But, you know, whatever. Great song. All good. <clears throat> but as soon as we lost the award, I went over. That was, for some reason, the moment. I was like, oh, okay. I was like bummed. And I was like, okay, now's my time. I gotta, I gotta like make up for this moment and go say hi to Ringo. So I went over to Ringo and I said, hey, I'm Tom. You know, I just lost that last award. And he said, well, smile, man, you're here. And it was the coolest moment ever. Freaking Ringo Starr from the Beatles talking to me and telling me to smile. I'm here. A little bit of a, you know, reminding me the reality of the situation. Pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that was my... Off the top of my head, coolest memory. There's so many great memories of that song, Hey There Delilah. Um, you know, just writing it, meeting the girl Delilah, writing it for her, keeping in touch with her a little bit, back and forth from New York to Chicago. Um, yeah, the, and still to this day, people ask me about that song. It just still has a life of its own, so pretty amazing. And then Rick also asked what my favorite love song is. Um, I mean... Yesterday by the Beatles, not to throw the Beatles back in there, but Yesterday is my favorite song of all time. I don't know if it's necessarily a love song because it's kind of like a sad song, but I think sad love songs, that's, that's still love songs, right? That, that counts. Uh, anyway, yeah, Yesterday would be my, my favorite love song of all time. Anyway, it's Tom from Plain White Tees. Thanks for listening to Heard It in a Love Song. See you guys. Have you ever noticed how many love songs involve a very specific distance? A thousand miles. I mean, look. You got Otis Redding. You a thousand miles away. Ooh, I miss you, darling, yeah. The Proclaimers. <laughs> Vanessa Carlton. Story of the Year, From up here, the city lights burn like a thousand miles of fire, and I'm here to sing this anthem of our dying day. And even the song that is the topic of today's video. A thousand miles seems pretty far, but they've got planes and trains and cars. I'd walk to you if I had no other way. We start our story in 1997, in Lombard, Illinois, where we meet up with three Willowbrook High School students, Tom Higginson, Dave Tirio, and Ken Fletcher. Tom was always an active and creative force, pulling a hat trick of high school sports, soccer, baseball, and tennis. On top of those physically demanding extracurriculars, Tom also enjoyed the theater and took part in several school plays. But there was a hidden underlying want. While his body was focused on sports, his mind was focused on music. So in early 1997, Tom recruited his two best friends, Ken Fletcher and Dave Tirio. With Tom on lead vocals, Ken on bass, and Dave on drums. The group played mostly local punk shows in Chicago's suburbs, eventually having gigs at the Metro in Chicago's Wrigleyville neighborhood. As the band began to establish itself in the local scene, a fourth member was recruited, Steve Mast, who joined playing lead guitar and singing backup vocals. Things were going great for the up-and-coming band, as they had made a name for themselves in the local scene. It was a cool scene. We'd play a few shows in Villa Park, have friends' bands from all around the Burbs play the show, and get our fans. Then we'd go play in their suburbs and get their fans. 
Higginson said, recalling a few gigs at Off the Alley in Homewood. That's how he built it up and brought it into Chicago. In the middle of making their first album that eventually hit the shelves in 2001, Come On Over, which has the distinction of being self-published, Tom was in a car accident, where he ruptured a kidney, lacerated a lung, and broke three vertebrae. It was 1999, and Tom was helping his friend move to college. Somebody cut him off and he overcorrected, swerving the van, flipping it over, and sending Tom flying out the window into the grassy midsection on the highway. He had a brace on for three months and had to learn to walk again. It was a life-changing experience for him, and since then, his songs have become more personal. In 2002, the band released another album with Fearless Records, Stop. Then the band went through some lineup changes. Tom remained the lead singer, but Dave moved from drums to lead guitarist, DeMar Hamilton taking over the drums, and they were joined by Tim Lopez as second guitarist and backup vocals. The final member was Mike Rotondo on bass. In January 2005, the band released another album with Fearless, All That We Needed. All That We Needed joined other classic albums released in January 2005, like I'm Wide Awake, It's Morning by Bright Eyes, and the documentary by The Game. But All That We Needed turned out to be all that they needed to become the talk of the music charts. The song they chose to close out All That We Needed was a soft and floaty acoustic ballad entitled Hey There Delilah, a love song about distance meaning very little when put up to bat against true love. But love songs and hurricanes are similar. More often than not, they are named after women. So we have to ask ourselves, who is the titular Delilah? Is she Tom's true love? Is she a fabrication? An ex that Tom was very intent on winning back? Well, truth be told, she's none of the above. Delilah exists. Don't get me wrong. Who's that Pokemon? It's Delilah. But there was no passionate love affair. No long-distance romance. Just a man with Looney Tune hard eyes going gaga over an Olympic runner. Delilah Di Crescenzo, who in 2002 was studying at Columbia, met Tom Higginson, where he, thinking she was the most beautiful girl he'd ever seen, attempted to woo her by saying he was going to write her a song. Seeing as how they were both natives of the Chicagoland area, Tom personally dropped off an early copy of All That We Needed on her doorstep. In an interview with ESPN, Delilah had the following to say. Tom came by to drop off the CD. He said, don't listen to it until I leave. I flipped it over and noticed track 13. Hey there, Delilah. I couldn't believe he followed through. My brother Nick and I listened to it together in the basement. Probably not the romantic image Tom envisioned for my first listen, but we were blown away. My first thought, oh no, did I lead Tom on? I became anxious. I was with Will. I'm still with Will to this day. Tom and I had a friendly relationship, and I wondered if he misconstrued my actions. He put so much effort into the song, and I felt guilty like, I'm such a wench. When my dad heard the lyrics, oh, it's what you do to me, he said, Delilah, exactly what did you do to this guy? It was flattering, though. The song is catchy, melodic, it's very romantic. It means something to everybody, especially for anybody who ever yearned for someone. But it's so specific. It mentions New York City. It names me. It's named after me. For a while, it was our secret. The song, released in 2005, didn't get any good airplay until 2007. Then it took off eventually reaching number one on the Billboard charts that July. That's when the questions came. Is this a true story? Does Delilah actually exist? I didn't want the spotlight. I was nervous that I'd let Tom's fans down. They'd be disappointed to hear that I have a boyfriend. Every girl would want a song about her, and they'd think I was ungrateful and rude to deny Tom. I felt pressure to live up to those expectations. On top of that, I was lacking confidence in my running. I wasn't yet validated in my sport. I hadn't proven myself. During competition, I didn't want to feel scrutinized and have people root against me. Then one day, my friend, Laura Wozniak, volunteered me for a radio interview. But I was like, Laura, I'm going to kill you. But I went for it anyway. I did the interview, and then the request poured in. The Today Show, USA Today, People Magazine. When it was announced that the song had been nominated for a Grammy, there was another surge in requests. During her Today Show interview, Delilah waxed poetic about her song. What I really hope through all of this is that it spotlights track and field, and it gives the sport a face. 
which is really important to us athletes in an Olympic year. Hey There Delilah topped the Billboard Hot 100 charts in 2007 and grabbed them two Grammy Awards in 2008 and a nomination for Song of the Year, losing out to Rehab by Amy Winehouse. And the Grammy goes to Amy Winehouse. Hey There Delilah sits at a combined 11 times platinum. It's written in the key of D major with a tempo of 104 beats per minute in common time. Delilah has some tie-ins with television as well, not only being covered on an episode of Sesame Street. You must agree I am a T, the letter T. Oh, I'm the letter T. Oh, I'm the letter T. I make the tuh sound, yes, that's me. But as of 2018, is also currently being developed into an almost How I Met Your Mother-esque sitcom. Music critic Josh Tarangio called it an intimate love song that's damn near universal. He praised the Plain White for managing to make another aching guy reaching out to a distant girl song feel fresh. Singling out Tom Higginson's otherwise imperfect voice and quote nasal delivery, for making the nearly comic sincerity of the lyrics seem completely genuine. And I think that's part of why I love the song. It's so completely genuine that you almost find yourself falling in love with the titular Delilah. Because we all have, had, or will one day have our own Delilah. A love that we would do anything for. A love that distance could never squash. It's like Hey There Delilah never went away. It's still important to people and a part of people's lives, Tom Higginson said in an interview with Alt Press. And there you have it our 1,000 mile journey to trace Delilah's steps and tracking down the truth. This week's love homework is Death Cup by Mom Jeans. If you'd like to continue learning about the love songs we've all come to know and love, subscribe and hit that bell. New episodes drop every Friday, and I take requests in the comments. Until next time, my name is Richard Hunt, and you heard it in a love song. Everybody knows the words except I don't understand it. Everybody knows that lullaby.